Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to I thought y'all knew it. I am your host, Tyrone Bridges. Let's get it. Check, check, one, two. Welcome, welcome, y'all. Welcome to Clear the Air, episode two. I am your host of I Thought You Knew, Tyrone Bridges, and we are live with attorney Bill Amadeo. What's up, Ty? What's happening, Bill? So, I all guess. right, what we got going on? What's the update? What, what can you update everybody with? Well, the Grady L prelim is over now. And it was about over two days, I guess about a, between 11 and 12 hours of testimony. It got pretty heated in there. Um, a lot of people have asked me why it wasn't on YouTube. So I want to explain that first. Okay. There was a motion for sequestration. And when you sequester witnesses, what they have to do is wait outside. Well, this was always done before COVID. Now with COVID, there's a concern that people could watch the testimony and basically testify according to what somebody else testified to. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying the attorney general would have done anything like that, but I certainly was not going to take a chance of my client's record being compromised. So we had to protect, we didn't have any witnesses to call at the prelim stage. It did get bound over, which was expected, but there was a lot of things that came out. And I know I can only talk about specifics, but I will say this right now and trovia star you guys got to hook up him and i talked a little bit today mm -hmm. you probably want to do a one-on-one -on -one with him and then maybe some group stuff trovia did a hell of a job it's a lot of stuff that came up at this prelim a lot of things that were horrifying but one of the things i'm seeing right now is the community i think the ipsy community is behind the great else but i do see a lot of people on like m live and stuff talking stuff about tina um making up facts i think the press has kind of couched things in a bullshit manner i'm going to say this and here's as much as i could say there was a reason we were all protesting last summer and i think that reason was pretty clear from the facebook videos that's right you know and i i know there's no election right now and i hope elections weren't a reason that we were people were generated because i mean after all the elections hit, 40 days later, this woman and man get charged. But all summer, it was a whole thing like, hey, what the fuck? Right. Now, do we not care about what they went through? Um, it's pretty clear what happened. And obviously, I can't get into specifics, but I think it's kind of heart-wrenching that I see people attacking social media under fake names. You know, and I'm a man. If you want to come at me, Fucking put your name down. Let's talk about it. But don't be given Emma Jones 212 hiding under a catfish alias talking shit. Right. And that's what's happening right now. So I think if this goes to trial, I hope it doesn't go to trial. That's going to be in Dana Nessel's hands. I've said to Dana Nessel, I've said to the Washington Sheriff's Department, I've said to Eli Savitt, we all need to work together in a peacekeeping corps. And so far, nobody seems to answer my pleas to that. So I will say this, I certainly do not want violence, and I've done what I can to protect all parties in this case, because I'm trying to proceed intelligently by fighting like hell for my client. But if this gets to trial, I'm just going to say this, it's going to be ugly. There's going to be things that are not going to want to be heard in the public, and there could be violent reactions. So before we get to that point, can we try to work as a fucking team? Right. I don't know. Um, I'm disappointed I'm not seeing more people who claim to be activists getting involved. You know, it's one thing. If you're going to be an activist, you have to be an activist. You can't pick and choose when to wear that hat. Right. Either you are or you're not. All pick in side, or not. You know? Pick a side. And I do think, you know, we have a judicial election coming up in 2022. Really? Um, yeah, Judge Brown's retiring. Mm. 
So there's going to be somebody new on the circuit court bench. Okay. And, you know, when somebody new comes in on the bench, there's always a little bit of changing of the guard in the circuit court. In the circuit court, that's the highest court we have other than the Court of Appeals or the Michigan Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. I think that election's going to be pretty telling. I mean, who are we going to put on the bench? Are we going to put somebody on the bench who's going to give a fuck about the people of Ypsilanti? Are we going to put somebody on the bench who understands the needs of Washington County? Or are we going to put somebody on the bench because they got a lot of money to spend on a campaign? Right. That's going to be fascinating. And as we proceed, there's a few people I have in mind that I really want you to connect with because people, if you want to run for office, you need to come on podcast. That's right. You need to be out there. You need to go out there when the questions aren't set up. You know? That's right. I mean, hey, you and I are cool, but I got to tell you, you will take a shot at me if you feel it's warranted. And I take that chance when I come on the air. Let's be real. You don't agree with everything I say and vice versa. It doesn't mean we're not cool. That's right. But I don't want to come on a show where you're going to give me softball questions so I could look good to people. That's bullshit. That's not what social media is supposed to be. Read between the lines what I'm saying there, because I got to watch what I say. Right. But I'm sick of setups. Let's just be real about shit. If you're against the Grady L's, tell me why, and let's go in a public forum and debate it. Don't be hiding behind social media. And tell me what Dana Nessel, Dana Nessel has an election coming up. Right. Does she give a fuck about the black community? Hmm. Does she? Because I heard nothing. she quoted, she was quoted in them live saying how she will not allow officers to be attacked like this. Did you see the video? I saw the video okay. completely, and my outrage was raw about it. Yeah, you know what, Ty? Here's the funny thing. A lot of people's outrage was raw, but the difference between you and some of these other people, I'm not going to get the names right now, is it was raw when it was convenient to be raw. It wasn't raw because it was genuine. And we're starting to peel the onion and say, okay. That's right. Let's just be real. We're starting to see what's going on in the layers. I'm told that there are some people that want me off this case and we got to be really careful about the Grady also want me off the case. I don't speak for them, but you could ask them about that. They stole what I did in court the other day. With that being said, I've pleaded for help from the legal community for a long time and nobody came forward. Now, with elections coming up, if somebody wants to step forward now, we got to ask what's their agenda. Right. Um, that'll be interesting. I'm really tired of people picking up causes when the camera's on, but when the camera's off, not doing fucking anything. And then throwing their hands up after a few days later after the elections is over. You know, I had a case, I have a case right now. I won't mention the county it's in, but the previous defense lawyer, who is somebody who you may or may not know based on our private conversations, told Mm -hmm. this kid, you need to take, I think it was like 17 years. Mm. And he didn't read all the evidence. And I go through the discovery. Whoa, what, look at this. We got some contradictions. And I'm like, that's horrifying. Are you telling me that there's defense lawyers that are not going to do their fucking job? Jesus Christ. Oh, they climb under the bus. We're not, just not care. No. How can we do that? So... I do plead to everybody in power in Washington County, you know what? It's time to work as a team on the Grady L case. And you know what? Where I'm at with it, I can't look bad here no matter what. I shined in court and I will fight like hell at trial, but it shouldn't come to that. This is not about Bill Amadeo. It's about a woman who was nearly beaten to death and a man who was tased for no reason. That's what this is about. And how we can prosecute victims, that's tragic, man. That's just tragic, you know. And I, definitely, definitely the public outrage should still be here. Yeah. The protest should still be here until they drop the charges because everybody in the whole matter have suffered a black eye. Everybody. Doesn't make any sense. So we're going to make an appeal to Attorney General Dana Nessel. I didn't send your office a request to interview you. Hear anything and, back? Uh, look here. We asking you to do the right thing. We asking you to do the right thing. And once again, everybody has elections coming up. It's a whole slate of elections coming up. So uh go figure. We're gonna just leave it like that. 
We there can have been do people, so much. There are people that are running against Dan and Nessel whose people have contacted me to speak on the Grady L case. And, you know, I'm not trying to throw Dan and Nessel under the bus. I'm trying to protect the Grady L family. So I'm hoping before it just becomes political alignments, we could just work as a team. Yeah, but she, I am got, kind of, she got bigger yeah. fish to fry. Yeah. Yeah. She does. Yes, she really does. And, you know, I think, you know, and this is something we talked a little bit about off air. What's the vibe in Ypsilanti right now? You, you're a lifelong resident. You tell me. It's, it's basically these, I don't want to blame the younger population by themselves, um, but it's a lot of shootings, a lot more shootings than normal. It's a lot more shootings than back in the days when there were gangs, drive-bys um, in the 90s. Way, way more shootings and killings. Um, I don't know what's the vibe out there. I don't know if it's retaliation. I don't know if it's just, just heated beef. But the sad part about it, and I'm going to speak this from the heart, as a buyer hospital baby, man. Okay. The sad part about it, all these people out here on the megaphones that know me, been knowing me for years, who have actually talked with me, worked with me, know the real deal that we're supposed to always stick together before we fall for anything. And when you got a platform, a platform that can actually reach out to some real people, some movers in the shakers, elected officials that won't come on this show, but they'll come on other shows. Sheriff Jerry Clayton that will come on other shows, but won't come on this show. Let's be real. If you're elected official and you are afraid to take hard questions, criticism from your constituents, then basically you'll punk out. You should punk out of your duty because you're not doing your duty. You take all the praises and the kudos and everything. I got so many calls and came to my office regarding the shootings in Ipsy, regarding what's going on. You don't hear the prosecutor out here talking on those shows about none of the shootings. You hear him out here, PR bonds. You hear him out here trying to clean people's records. But my question is this. His policies and his efforts, whether he believe it or not, on God, and I put these all on the churches on all the south side of Ypsilanti, his policies is destroying the village theory like me and Mr. Lee Tusa was talking about on the previous podcast. We had people that were elderly, voters, strong voters that was trying to make the community better and wanted to do things with people like us. But then you got these people coming in on the brinks of these protests, call themselves the leaders, disrespecting the people who've actually laid the foundation for them, disrespecting our names, disrespecting our movement, disrespecting what we do, knowing that will never tear away from our momentum. That will only make us stronger. Lee Tucson is the number one person everybody should consult about trying to find out what to do with this community. I'm not even gonna put myself out there because I can list a whole bunch of brothers, but nobody has been out there with my track record. And if you wanna believe it, if you wanna say it or match somebody's track record with mine since 1993, and I'm willing to put anybody's money on it or anybody's check on it. I know exactly what our community have been needing. I've been putting them in our communities, the programs, the things that these kids don't have, the things that these kids should be learning. But you got cliques, groups ran by leaders, won't allow nobody like myself to come in and put genuine programs in. That's why I do them by myself. One so our community is gonna fall apart 
until we pick up that village and walk with that village and understand what that village is saying. One of the things we need to do, in my opinion, um, in addition to the equipment we talked about in that office next door is we got to find you a uh, airtime. I did this with Nate Frazier and it worked well for Nate. And I hope things are okay with Nate. Like I told you, Nate and I are cool. We're not what we used to be, but you know, your voice is certainly a different voice. And I do think you need some regular airtime, which we'll pay for. Cause I do think you got a message that most people aren't hearing. I think it's a message where it's one thing to say you want to make a change. I'm not putting anybody else down. I'm just about me and you right now. It's one thing to say you want to make a change. It's another thing to actually try to do it. And it frustrates me when certain people I was friends with, um, people that are now deemed me to be their enemies, when it's always funny when people need money for things like elections, I'm always their best friend. But, you know, when an election's over, People, if there's a kid that needs a code at Christmas, it doesn't matter if it's a fucking election year or not. You know what I mean? That's right. And that's what I respect about you. And I know we're going to be at odds on some things from time to time, but I'm I'm new to Washington County. I've been here, say, three, four years. And I know people feel I've been here forever because of the cases I've been involved in. But, you know, I'm a Jersey kid and I grew up poor. And it's very, I see both sides of it being poor and then having money. But with that being stated, that journey has been brutal. People think I come from just wealth and I had everything handed to me. I think there are kids in Ipsy that need to see there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I don't think we as a whole are doing enough for that. I do know there were some big time law firms in Washtenaw County that had wanted me a couple of years ago. And then once I got involved in things, like I wasn't going to go with them anyway, because I, I got my two firms, kick an ass with those two firms. But I am not the image that some people want. And the image I have is I'm going to work my balls off. I'm going to speak my mind, but I'm not always going to be politically correct. Two of those things sound good to a lot of firms. The third one doesn't. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, and forgive my arrogance, if your fucking life's aligned, you want me as your lawyer. And I'm not going to pull any punches about that. But having that power, you have to care about the community you're working in. Because if you just have that power and don't give a fuck, you're doing everyone a disservice. And I see that all the time. And I guess in some ways I was duped by some things. Um, I really thought, and I'm cool with Nate. I'm not cool with some of the other people those protests. We talked about me and Trisha having our issues. I thought we were all family. And I don't feel that anymore. I feel like the Grady L's have been left out there to dry. I feel like all that energy and fire we had during the summer, all those protests went away as time left and the pain of Shatina and Dan didn't go away. And it was all about them. Right. The protest and it was, was never about, about me or anybody else. It was about the victims, which were the Grady L's. It was all about the Grady L's. So, you know, I will tell you, I make a lot more money in Shiawassee and Wayne than I do in Washington right now. Because in Washington, well, I got a really huge case in Washington, but there's, I almost in some ways have been blackballed because people have told me walk away from the Grady L case. I'll never walk away from that case. Like other lawyers have said that. But it's amazing the respect I get outside of Washington because people are like, whoa, this guy's a fucking fighter. But inside Washington, I'll get when your life's in line, you'll call me. But for the stupid OUIL or something, you're going to go somewhere else because I'm not PC. You know, and I got 275 cases in 16 counties. I'm not worried about work, obviously. But it's funny how the image outside of our county is so respected. And inside our county, it's like, why aren't you, why are you still fighting for those people? When you say those people, do you mean the Great Ls? Do you mean the Black community? What do you mean by that? But it's a, it's a pretty disrespectful commentary yeah you got a click you got a clan and honest to god i can speak for my the lawyers that have been on my case that i've had shit the lawyer would prefer me to get the money together to pay the judge off yeah and you know you told me that i ain't Ooh. gonna lie this is my prime like i said this is my prime time to tell the truth why would i want to lie on a lawyer talking about he'll pay the judge off in my case 
I'm like, you know what, well, where in the hell a black guy gonna get that much amount of money? And matter of fact, I'm going to jail for somebody else's drugs. I don't get this it. This was this was the late 80s, right? Yeah, 1989. Prime the time of money. crack, prime time when crack was running rapid on the south side of Ipsy Latin. And the amount of money you told me about, that was big money back then. Five thousand right? dollars. Yeah. Five thousand. He said, I'll take it go away. I ain't gonna lie. I'll put that on God. It shows I'm a child of God. I will not lie. The lawyer said, I will make it go away. Give me five thousand dollars. I'll make it go away. That's the problem. See, a lot of people don't want to work with me because I'm gonna bust your ass out if you're fucking over me. I feel I'm you. Bust your ass out if you're telling a, 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 a lie. I'm gonna bust your ass out if you got an ulterior motive. See, I don't have no filter. Like I told you, I've been homesick a long time. A long time. That means no give a fuck. Right. I'll say what I want, and I dare motherfucker to come to me. Because I'm not going to court. I'm going to split his shit back. Right. I feel Period. you. I got you. That's. And we talking yeah. about real. Now, the reason why the Grady Hills is, is, is being dogged out. They being dogged out right now by the county. And Ali and his movement in which his ass rode in like a white horse on their back. On the pains and the protests on their back. And every time the mic was hot and say, somebody speak, he jump up there and speak. But now he's quiet as a church mouse, knowing that he got political pull and what type of political pressure that he can put on people. He know what's happening. He know he did them wrong. And see, God don't like ugly. He in office right now because of the Grady Ailes case, because of the protests. I got video where I went and actually videotaped and watched him talk on the mic. So he can't lie and say he wasn't out there getting his five minutes of fame for his political career. He wasn't. Uh, we, him and I were out there together. I know we rolled all the protests together. Oh, and you got it. You know, being real. I, I know he's not a fan of mine at this point. And all I could say when people ask me my opinion of Eli Savitt is I hope the right thing is done. But I will tell you, the Grady L thing certainly played a role in that election. Hell yeah. And just Arian like, Slay got a lot of shit for not being at the protest. We know that. Right. Right. But shit, damn if she did, damn if she don't. But like I said, with that situation, uh, that was some crooked shit. The whole campaign shit. You know how they did her. And I, that's why I brought him on the show, because I wanted some fair and balanced conversation. I wanted some talking. I don't want nobody to sit there talking about he my boy, she my girl. She ain't my girl. He ain't my boy. And Hugo wasn't my boy. I brought him on, and I got all the tapes, and I'm going to rerun it on our doggone website, because Facebook, Facebook is playing a little game with it. They actually blocking people from seeing videos large. And I know <laughs> it's got political pressure, y'all. Look. Y'all, anytime y'all want to see our videos, they're not blocked on our website, www.ithoughtyouknewipsy.com. That's our new website. Y'all can find out all our information. Y'all can check out our, our latest and greatest interviews. And y'all can check out real information because we ain't going to hold no punches soon. We ain't going to hold no punches. And, and, and if Ellie Sabbath administration can't get it together with everybody, they're going to fall for something. I'm telling also, you, what bothered me about the election, I, I, you know, and I get it. Politics is a full contact sport. OK, it is what it is. But the way Arian Slay was portrayed was bullshit. Arian Slay is a great person. She's a damn knowledgeable prosecutor. And, and when she got a pure ass heart as an as attorney, as a mom, like, you know, I'm, I'm like talking to her, like, really, like. About these shootings and stuff and what's going on. Are you going to prosecute these flat out? Yeah. I mean, but you can't be a, is. you can't be a prosecutor and everybody's friend where it's oh, okay no. to get yeah. everybody a PR bond, knowing we got some dangerous people out there that's making our community bad, sad, news, sad, whichever news that comes out on M live yeah. and predators. You know, we got our babies to protect. I, like I said, I got, People calling me and talking about, oh, 
Should I send my grandkids to uh, uh, Eastern or what you? Look here, you better follow suit. You better follow suit until they get it together. See, Eastern, this plague been on Eastern for a long time because Eastern, Eastern haven't been working <laughs> with the greater communities that they build in. They have been working in certain sects, but they haven't been working with the poor people in the community. I'll tell you, Eastern Michigan, you know, I got a couple of cases from there. And I will tell you, boy, that's a topic we'll have to delve yeah. in. Oh, yeah. There's that, a lot of crazy corruption going over there. I was a, I was a student over there. They prevented yeah. me. I could tell you some names right now to blow the stack off. I can give you a full story. When I was a student over at Eastern Michigan University, there was an actual black man. I could say his name and people hair rise up on their neck. He actually prevented me from doing a Hurricane Katrina benefit concert at Eastern Convocation Center. I actually had BG lined up. I had a lot of a lot of uh, uh, New Orleans uh, rappers. I had a lot of connections in Detroit. They was going to perform. They was going to raise money, and we was going to get this money to the Katrina victims. But I had old uh, GP, y'all know the initials, uh, blocked me, blocked me, and he rolled with me from Washington Community College. From when I was doing stuff in the community, he couldn't stand me because it's like he couldn't work with me. I don't fit in his clique. So when he went to Eastern, he was definitely going to block everything I did. So yeah, Eastern, yeah, Eastern, you getting what the hell you deserve right now. Them chickens coming home to roost. I know um, some benefits I gave money to, and I think, I think the theory behind those benefits were they're going to throw the money in the air. Whatever lands on the ground, they keep. Whatever stays in the air goes to the cause. <laughs> there was a... A lot of money I was involved with donations where I started to realize, huh, I wonder where that money's going. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. And what's fucked up about that when it comes to fundraising and all that, and I respect what you did, I, I could tell you, it seems like when people legitimately want to raise money for a cause, they get their throat slit. Yeah. But when people want to raise money and it's questionable, nobody questions it. It's like, wow, this yeah. is, I don't, what, tell me this. You take somebody who's been in prison 20 years and they see these young kids today. What is the feeling like as someone who's lived in Ipsy for a long time? What's the difference between 1989 and 2021 in Ypsilanti? Right now, people my age bracket, 50, I would say honest to God, man, 50 and 50 and up are honestly thinking these motherfucking kids that lost their motherfucking minds. Either their parents don't give a flying fuck. Uh, the school systems can't control them because that's the situation too. Uh, my grandma always told me, idle mind is the devil's workshop. Sure. We ain't got shit in Ipsy. Ask yourself, as a, as a young man running around here, the age these young kids is, what's, it, what's there as an Ipsy to do? Back in the days, back at least... Back in my era, it was a bowling alley. We had somewhere to go roller skating. We had some places to hold functions. We had some places to gather. But right now, there's no places to gather. There's no places for these kids to gather. There's no places. And you can't weigh it all on Park Ridge because Park Ridge Community Center can't hold the whole motherfucking county. Eastern, Southeastern Michigan University, in this, in this area, in this area, not university, but in this area, West Willow, Ipsy, uh, uh, Superior Township, MacArthur out there, MacArthur, they all been neglected. They all been neglected to the point where these kids actually make their own fun and actually make their own hell in heaven. They ride and do it. The, the Girls and Boys Club, look what happened to the Girls and Boys Club. They auctioned that off real quick. Yeah, and that if we don't create, that was we don't the city create, of Ipsy. We don't create more of those options for these kids. They're going to end Man, up in the criminal justice on. system much easier. We right? had this discussion over and over and over again. I, when I ran for mayor of Ipsy, I was talking about Water Street. We can do a lot with Water Street. All that dirt down there, y'all can bring carnivals down there. Y'all can do all kind of stuff. Not thinking about it. When I was bitching 
when I was running for mayor and I bitched about the dog old softball diamond over the south side. Now look at it. I'm out the picture. Now look at it. You know, you got a bunch of elected officials that's going out of office, y'all. And I wanted to let y'all know real quick in the city of Ypsilanti. These are the seats that's up next year. The city of Ypsilanti, this is a bulletin. I got to throw this out at y'all. If y'all don't like what's going on in Ypsilanti, and I'm hope I'm loud as a motherfucker, because here it is. <laughs> the mayor's seat is up. Huh? The mayor's seat is up. November 2022. <laughs> Both war one seats is up. Nicole Brown and also Brian Jones Chance. Both ward one seats are up. South side. Any worthy person or any close to worthy or even a, a, a small bit of worthy person that want to run for office. Y'all call our show. 734-444-3675. Or you can reach me directly, 734-444-4841. I'll help your ass. Ward 2, Jennifer Simon's position is up. So there's a Ward 2 position available in the city of Ypsilanti. One more, newsflash, Ward 3. Ward 3, Anthony Morgan's position is up next year. November 2020, I mean, November 2022. Y'all heard me. The city of Ypsilanti needs a change in leadership. If anybody want to run for office, holler at the show. Because I've made my request to speak to some people at city, at the city, including the chief. No reply. But he got a major problem over there. He's going to need all the help he can. Once again, the city of Ypsilanti, all those seats are available and they're open. And if y'all need to know how to run a campaign, don't need much right now to get those seats because uh, they're available. They are available. Do you want to run? Do I want to run? Uh, I wouldn't want to run for nothing but somewhere in the county or the state. I'd love to run against Ricky Jefferson, sorry ass. I ain't going to lie. Ricky no. or, or, or Ronnie Peterson. And I, what are they up? Ronnie Peterson, I had his campaign literature on my, uh, on my, I was going to shred it live on the show, but I, I just <laughs> didn't want his face on my, I haven't wanted to see his face on my, uh, in my office. So he sends out his lead, his, his, his campaign literature running around getting the same old votes over and over and over again. Everybody, mom and pops and told their kids to vote for him because that's their friends and their cousins. And they know they don't do a damn thing for the county, but comes out when it's time to get a little press coverage. You know, we need to change the guard. To change the guard means we need to reset some of these elected officials' seat. If they ain't doing what we need to do, do need them to do, like you don't hear none of the elected officials hollering out about all these damn shootings. Even a, a elected officials' family member got shot. And they, he ain't said shit, quiet as a church mouth. Yeah, you told me about that. I haven't heard Ricky anything. Jefferson's grandson got shot yeah. by two juveniles, 16 year old. And the sad part about it, he quiet as a motherfucker. That's sad. If you're a public official and you act like you don't have no doggone power, you're a liar. You're a liar. You have the power of calling, you have the power of holding meetings, you have the gift of gab. Matter of fact, it seems like my mouth is louder than a lot of them elected officials, unless I'm getting my pockets lining, which this show ain't paid for, but nobody but me. Right. Elected officials right now, y'all ain't doing y'all job at Ypsilanti. Ronnie Peterson, Ricky Jefferson, y'all know what I'm talking about. If I want something done, I got to reach out to the white guy. That's sad. <laughs> Ronnie don't return calls. Ricky don't want to kick it with me because I hurt his feelings when he was on city council. Bottom line, he can't lie that that meeting didn't happen at B-52s because I recorded it. Him and Ronnie was running conversations in between our meetings, so he can't lie. Come on now. 
If everybody want Ipsy to change or Washington County to change, y'all got to start calling them elected officials, them quiet ones, them quiet ones. Pick up the phone and blow their damn phone up. Y'all can call my show all day. I can do show after show after show after show until Ellie Savage and his goons try to set me up on something. Try it. But like I said, Y'all want y'all county better? Stand up. Don't let one or two voices out here holler and say they want it better. People, stop being fucking cowards. You're voters. Your vote has power. And you know, there's a lot of talent in Washington, too. And it just, it seems like it's almost predetermined who wins elections without looking at the content, looking at what they have to say. I mean, that's... They That's be talking a about my cousins and stuff. I, I, it kills me. People tell me Ronnie Peterson, they cousin, Ricky Jefferson, they cousin, and I'm sitting up there scratching my head. So now we finna get into a damn political art. What the fuck that they done done for the community for real? Well, they didn't did this, they didn't did that. But where are they when black folks shooting each other in the streets, crying in Ipsy, right down the street from Perry Elementary School? One of the renowned schools, elementary schools in the county. New Park Ridge Community Center, the new Park Ridge, the all those beautiful Park Ridge housing built and everything. Shootings over there, drive-bys. Come on. And West Willow, and West Willow's Ypsilanti Township ain't exempt. Y'all just had a damn uh, a shoot the other day. Shoot the other day, and literally these cops. Honestly, I feel for these Washtenaw County sheriff deputies and the Ipsy ones. I know they're tired of the motherfuckers. They arrest somebody and they get right out. I know they're tired. But all the moms, the all the older folks are quiet. I guess they cool because they normally vote the same way every time. I guess it's, he's doing a good job. That's a lie, mm-hmm. y'all. And you know what's sad? Until somebody in like Dexter or Ann Arbor loses their child, we're not going to see the change we need. Right That's now, sad. Ypsilanti is like the black eye of Washtenaw County to the outsiders. You know, when they think of Washtenaw, they think of the big house and U of M, and we're the second or third most rich, we're the richest county next to Oakland, I think, in the state of Michigan. We have more wealth here, and it's the highest educational city in Arbor in the country. Right. And here we are in a 15-minute drive. You can be walking to a war zone, and instead of trying to fix these issues, we're sitting here just, you know, well, it's Ipsy. It's not. They don't view Ipsy as Washington County. They view Washington and Ipsy like its own separate world. We're all in the same fucking community. That's a problem. And if most of these townships can do away with the name Ipsy, they would. I've they would. Talks, oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I've heard talks about it. The township want to get rid of Ipsy. They want to get rid of the name Ipsy. And the sad thing about it, anybody that can say they want to, oh, Tyrone, talk against the leadership mayor because she the black. No, I'm not talking about the black mayor. I'm not talking about the black mayor. I'm talking about the entire fucking leadership. And honestly, for the mayor to have the longest reign up there on the city council, been there for a long time, I want to say 20, uh, 2002. All I'm saying, y'all, if people have been serving office and been sitting on a seat for over 10 to 16 years and shit ain't changed, y'all need to have y'all head checked because I think I'm the only one talking logical if y'all don't think that's wrong. They need to... They, 10, 15, 20 years? Look here. They trying to retire as the, in the same position. It should be term limits. It oh, should yeah. be term limits. In, in, city, in city council, you should not die in a city position or a city hall position, especially you ain't really moving for all of the people. Come on. Now, when, when the shooting happens over there, over there at Park Ridge Homes, and I seen the news interview. The mayor came out talking about, well, basically we need to have a meeting with the property owner. And, 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 and if these people can't get under control, we need to put these people out. Wait a minute. The 
The lady says somebody came by and shot and actually shot her son, her, her nine-year-old child. The bullet hit him accidentally. And the, uh, the other interview was, was the girl, when she was talking about the guy said, he gonna come by and shoot this bitch up. Why is she, why is the mayor of Ipsy talking about meeting with the property manager to have people put out like that? I don't get that whole interview. So when you get on these interviews, you gotta say the right shit. You gotta say the right shit. She should have been like, I need to actually invite the prosecutor over here and evaluate what's going on or even invite Debbie Dingo over here and see if we can make these some federal cases because these are a housing commission. These are our federal home. These are subsidies, subsidized homes. We got to yeah, work I, together if we want our community better. When I asked Debbie Dingle, what was her opinion of my clients getting charged? She said to me, well, we need to stick together. And what she mean by that? What do you mean by that? <laughs> what she mean by that? What the fuck was that? So I'm not a Debbie Dingle fan because I was she was at the protest. And then when when Shatine and Dan got charged, oh well, what are you gonna do? Debbie, the I mean, most powerful, one of the most powerful voices in Congress, man. For yeah, real. Yeah. Debbie, Debbie, if if if, jo if John was here, I guarantee you John would have been fighting for. You know, what bothers me about the charging of the Grady Ls, I've said it before, is after the elections were over all the thing 40 days after all those elections the grady l's got charged it Crazy. sat in the coffers for months and then 40 days after the elections were over well now we can charge them really that's crazy man i will tell you this whether it's true or not and i'm not a predictor of this i don't know i know how the grady l's feel and i feel they feel they were used yeah, I, I, w I wish, and and I don't want your clients to absorb this in and think like this. I wish they could come on the show or even say some shit, the whole thing, how they feel. Because I know for a fact, we was out there with passion for them. Yeah. And just like you said, 40 days later, when the lights went out, nobody said nothing about nothing. Because basically... I'm thinking, and this supposed to be handled now. The, now the dude is in office. Not that he was Eli. making a promise. This was a social movement by the Democratic Party to ride the coattails of the Grady L's. Ronnie, uh, uh, forty days after the fucking elections, the Grady L's are charged Ricky by a Jefferson Democrat Attorney General. Ricky Jefferson was there too. He was on the mic too. Yes, he was. So if you think about all those people, mm. all those people that was out there on the mic, and I, I'm glad, I'm proud that I didn't touch the mic because I didn't want it. I said, I can, make, I can make noise in silence on my platform because that was too much, too much dancing for me. Yeah, it was a lot of dancing, wasn't it? <laughs> too much dancing for me, man. I'm straight to the point, man. We got to get to the point. Jerry, look here, man. This look bad on everybody, man. This look bad on the community. This looked bad on the community. This looked bad on the deputies because honestly, at the end of the day, the deputy shouldn't have raised his fist. Matter of fact, he shouldn't have never tackled her. Well, period. Why did why did Clayton go on Foley's show and not your show? Clayton go on Foley's show because Foley gave him uh, softball questions or so Foley <laughs> arrived. Foley carries lunch pay, I guess, because I, I watched it. That was a great interview, but some of the stuff they were saying, I'm just like, you know, everybody ain't going to agree with you, bro. And then yeah, for the you know what? That some of these youth catching crimes was crazy. If you want to be in a position in the public eye, yeah, you've got to answer questions from all people. Shit. Jerry Clayton, if, if Jerry Clayton, if Jerry Clayton ever do an interview with me, the ghost of my peoples will come back. <laughs> and I'm talking about from the South. And y'all can do my legacy record. Y'all can do... Lee gave y'all a little taste of my history. We ain't no little pushovers. We got some history. Ass kicking history. Killing history. I ain't gonna lie. Go figure. See, I was muzzled when I went to the penitentiary for somebody else dope. But let a motherfucker come correct this time. Different situation.
different situation. All for the love of my damn community. Bottom line. Anybody got a problem with that? Roll with it. When you went down, what was that like back then? I mean, you're going down for a crime you didn't commit. Bruh, at the age of 18 years old, going in for an eight for kilo of cocaine on the news, all in the newspaper. They was talking about the biggest rock of cocaine I ever seen in my life. And I'm sitting up there, my whole legacy going down here. I was a popular DJ. I was a community person. My mom was a community person. She was working with me, working with the community. Knowing the wretched guy that I saved twice. Once in a recreation pool when he was drowning. Me and Jeffrey Flake saved his life. And went to prison for his eighth for kilo of cocaine and didn't snitch. See all these people in the in the in the uh pod verse or in the Facebook verse, they don't know nothing about snitching. I went to prison for not snitching. So when you go in the penitentiary for not snitching, you get high honors up in there, flat out. You get mad high honors up in there. Bridges, they gave me my name because I actually became a Melanic. I was a, one of the uh, leaders of the Melanics, Melanic Islamic Palace of the Rising Sun. And I still hold the title of X. All the brothers gave me credit when I went up there because I was up in there. I was speaking to the brothers about retaking their life and going back in the community and rebuilding in the community. It's a promise after being locked up. So it was more or less like a lesson inside of a lesson, man. Uh, a lot of people came from my hometown. You know, they said, don't ride with your homeboys because your homeboys get you in trouble. And that was true because I don't ride with nobody. I rode with me by myself. And uh, it's hard lessons up in there. Very hard lessons up in there. These OGs, older guys would actually pull me to the side and other guys to the side and kind of like talk to them and, and say, look, you know, you here for a short time. Don't make this a long time. Right. You know, I was there for three and a half years. I wasn't proud of it because I went away from, with my, from my baby. But the whole public that I left, the South Side, didn't know what I went to. They, they knew what I went to prison for. But because I didn't come back and play in the streets, a lot of them turned their back on me. It was like, no, nah, we ain't fucking with him. <laughs> we ain't messing with him. Then I started doing positivity in the community, man, because that was my legacy. My legacy was interrupted for a short period of time. But then Where were you, you serving people, time at? Huh? Where were you serving time at? Uh, I started off in Ionia. I own you, yeah. And then they shipped me across the Mackinac Bridge. They said, we gonna take you way away from your mama. I yeah. said, I don't give a damn. I said, I'm gonna do this time and go home. I'm short time. I kept saying, I'm short time. Right. I'm short time. And all I was doing, receiving God's blessings, man. I went in there, didn't know how to draw. Man, God blessed me with the talent of art, knowing how to draw. I used to make greeting cards, man, for people. They used to send them home to their families. I didn't literally made some hundreds of cards man everything man i did a lot of stuff learned a lot of stuff but when i came home it was a different type of ball game man it was a different type of ball game i had to readapt to the community people were different you know we still had brian mackey but he snatched a lot of people man at the age of 16 17 18 16, 15, 16, 17 on the south side. Snatched them out of there. Locked them up for a long time. Still locked up. That A lot of people I want to advocate for, too, that's from the south side. That's got some time under their belt. One brother, Shannon Rich. Brother, I grew up with, been knowing him for years. So we're going to try our best to try to advocate for him and his situation. Um, it's a couple other brothers and some young guys up in there. My brother, shoot, you know. You feel the sentencings back then were unfair? Are oh, they overly? Man. I mean, and this they, is one before my time, so I'm asking you bro, for now. Bro, they was—I ain't gonna lie—they was handing out sentences like candy cane, man, candy, yeah. man. They was—they was happy to sentence. Seriously, yeah. just to show you, 
uh, we did a show on a, uh, on a young man who was sentenced from Kalamazoo. And he was sentenced during the time that we were sentenced. Uh, no, no, he was sentenced in 2000. But back then, you know, Kalamazoo, they still a little rough. But he got 30 to 90 years for armed robbery. First, <laughs> first offense. 30 uh. to 90 in Kalamazoo. But in Washtenaw County, when Brian Mackey was, was, was having our sentences, man, I mean, he was doing, he was, he was doing way, way over. And honestly, these, these lawyers, you wouldn't hear no lawyers talking about stuff that you talking about. She, they try to get you this bar talking. But a lot of the <laughs> lawyers right now that's up in that doggone, them uh, judges' uh, faces right now, and they know we ain't going to, I ain't going to lie. A lot of them know a lot of that money that they get, they paying them off or, or, or they trying to work out a deal with them or whatever. They know what's going on. Come on, man. Them old school attorneys been in there flat out. A lot of the people around here already got a dog on old school attorney on their Rolodex. They already know who to call. Clyde Ritchie was one of the motherfuckers that everybody called. Something he's dead, right? Clyde Ritchie. Yeah, he's he passed away, right? Uh, I believe so, unfortunately. Yeah. I heard a lot of good things about Clyde Ritchie. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of market name. Washtenaw County, no, I know I'm 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 absorber of the Washtenaw County dirt in the system. Flat out. Air their damn dirty laundry out. And the county ain't always the, 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 the county administration ain't always been kind to black folk, and they still ain't kind to black folk. Oh, it's a racist community. In general. Hell yeah. You got a few in office right now, you got a few in positions, flat out. Yeah. And, and if the county really wanted to do something real easy, if you got all these doggone construction projects going on, and anybody that's uh, running for office or actually in office can hear this, I ain't mad at you, but check this out. I've been hollering this at every doggone open meeting. All these construction projects that's going on in Washington County. One question. Where the niggas at? You don't have no black workers. You are so proud of our construction. You got all white workers. I'm looking at all caterpillars. I'm looking at all them dozers, all that. I'm CDL certified. I can drive any fucking thing. They don't have no black workers. All the construction projects, go around, ride around, just do your diligent, do diligent for the next two days, and name how many black folks you've seen driving with them trucks, working on them projects. I'm not talking about no, no Hispanics. They don't count. I'm talking about niggas. And I'm telling the public to look at that. When you got these construction projects in Washtenaw County, and Washtenaw County is supposed to be, be this pro-black people, pro-minority, and you don't see that many black folks running around here driving the construction uh, vehicles? You don't see them working? Come on, man. We got some of the baddest damn concrete people around here. And you mean to tell me, oh, trifling ass Roddy Peterson, Ricky Jefferson can't look at that dysfunctional uh, uh, hiring makeup? That shit's fucked up. The same shit that I was protesting at when they was doing Hamilton Crossing. Me and another person protest down there hard as hell. We was protesting because we wanted black people to apply for jobs down there. And Brian Foley motherfucking ass benefited from our protest. Now he's working for the city. So Brian can't lie about that. Put that on God. That's what we did. But see, that's the fruits of Tyrone Bridges and his labor of what he did for his community folk. But you didn't know that, that he benefited from our protest to get that fucking job he got now. Did you? you ain't know that, did you? He told me that. I'll put that on God. If he lying, he dying. We did that, that little protest. So that's what I'm saying. We movers and shakers, we do things at a small level that don't make no noise to some people, but we change shit. And see, that's what a lot of these people that's in leadership position now, they don't have that juice, man. They don't understand how to do it. 
or care. No, they don't care. Yeah. Because if they cared, the city would be going in a different direction than what it is. People wouldn't be calling like, damn, who else then got shot? Somebody dead lying in the doggone parking lot right down, down the street. People wouldn't be calling the show talking about that. They'd be calling, talking about, we've been, we banded together. We got a meeting. This pandemic ain't the excuse. We can meet outside. Right. Right. That's it. Well, let's catch up this week. Um, early next week, actually, if you come into the office. We'll we go over will. A few we definitely will. Trials. And uh, one thing I want to end by saying this, and the community who's watching this, and I do not always get along with her. We actually have a couple of cases we're not seeing eye to eye on, but Arian Slay is an asset to this community. Hell yeah, she's an asset. And I wish she'd call the show. <laughs> I miss might. talking to her. Shit. But Arian, um, great person, great lawyer. And even though we don't see eye to eye on every issue, she's somebody who's an asset to this community. And the way she was portrayed was not fair. Man, not fair. all I got to say, and I'm not, I'm not doing a pre-campaign pitch for her, but I tell you, I'll put my damn life on the line and run, run, help her run her campaign if I have to. If she run again against this buffoon shit that's going on, I'll put my life on the line to make sure she get in office. Because I Slay she run did, for any position. She would have actually yeah. been the best bet for us. And actually, the strange part about it, when the interview I had with her, she would have actually probably pulled them in on her administration and gave them some type of something. She would have done that. Well, you know, but you're right, man. Let's catch up, man. I know I'm long-winded. All the Facebook people who have replied on our comment, our chats. Uh, the Grady L family, you know, we ain't gonna give up. We ain't gonna give up. We gonna dig in these people's ass. These politicians is running office. I said it. Your lawyer didn't say it. I can say it. All <laughs> they can do is plant some shit on me. I'm I'm cleaner than the board of health. I don't have no shit up my sleeve. I don't do no drugs. I ain't got no uh nothing you can catch me with. I'm clean. But you plant some shit on me, it's gonna be whoa. It's gonna be whoa. And I'm saying it like I mean it. I know who your lawyer will be, so don't worry too much. Hey, my man, I got, <laughs> I definitely got some fun people for him too. They don't understand. But Bill, let's keep on doing what we're doing, man, making noise. My daddy always say the squeaky wheel gets the oil, so let's make some noise, man. I'll catch you soon. Thanks, Doc. All right, peace. Later.